hoping one of them come for me so I could stab out everybody on this mother. What's up guys, welcome to a new video on my channel. You all know Tupac and Snoop Dogg. As you all know, the two label colleagues at Death Row were very good friends. They spent a lot of time together and of course also made music together. So they had an incredibly good chemistry on their songs. And there were even plans for a collaboration between the Dog Pound, Snoop Dogg's group and Outlaw's Tupac's group. After all, the two were also two of America's most wanted. But what the fewest know is that Tupac and Snoop Dogg quarreled shortly before Puck's death. How it came about and what this dispute looked like, I'll explain to you today in this video. But before the video starts, I just want to give a short shout out to the guys from Manners to Society. They do killer hip hop podcasts in German and I was even able to listen to one. Check it out, I linked it in the description below. I think this podcast could be very interesting for you because I talk a little more personally with my opinions. Well guys, let's start with the video. We write the year 1996. The West versus East Coast beef was at the top and just before it escalated. Death Row versus Bad Boy Records. That was the topic in the rap world. And disses flew without end. So dissed absolutely everyone from the Death Row camp Bad Boy Records. Even the R&B singers and Snoop Dogg was one of them. Only weeks before Tupac's death and the confrontation with him, Snoop recorded a track on which he dissed Biggie. Nigga don't say shit cause I already said I be on the red eye. You're fat, you black, you whack, you sound toe up cause she got one dead eye. And Snoop should not only have recorded this diss for Tupac. After all, it should have come to a confrontation between Bad Boy and Snoop Dogg. When Snoop was shooting a music video in New York, he was shot on his caravan. Apparently, the people from Bad Boy were responsible for that. Nevertheless, you should know that Biggie, Puffy, Tupac and Snoop were friends before the beef. I think most people know that. Nevertheless, it is very important for the story. And that's exactly why Snoop should have wanted this unnecessary beef to finally end. And so it came after the MTV Awards 1996, at which, by the way, Tupac Nas Beef also found its climax, to an interview. This interview was a radio live interview that was only conducted with Snoop Dogg. And here he was asked what he thinks of Puff Daddy and Biggie. Surprisingly, Snoop Dogg replied that the two are his homies, which they actually were before the beef. Only, as I said, they had a mega beef going on. He also said that he is very cool with the two and that he wants to make music with them. Tupac, The Outlaws and Death Row Records heard it all live and just Puck, the many Snoop Dogg statements, not at all. According to The Outlaws, Puck was particularly angry because Snoop recorded Death Row with Puck only weeks before. I got this part of the story from the interviews of The Outlaws and Snoop Dogg, but I only got the next part of the story from Snoop Dogg's point of view because Snoop Dogg did a detailed interview about it. Whether you believe everything 100%, you can decide for yourself. I only mention this because Snoop is known for telling stories, I would say, a bit incomplete. After the interview, Snoop arrived at his hotel. At some point, Snoop's uncle came up to him and said, Tupac is tripping. The uncle explained to Snoop Dogg that Tupac was full on gas. He should have talked badly about Snoop Dogg and had plans to go to a club to look for Biggie and then sort it out with him if you know what I mean. All of a sudden, Snoop Dogg's phone rang. It was Muta, also known as Napoleon. He was a very close friend and very close confidant of Tupac and a member of the Outlaws. Napoleon said to Snoop, Pac needs weed. Snoop Dogg replied, tell Pac to get it himself. Then he hung up. All of a sudden, the phone rang again. This time, it was Pac himself. He nodded, Muta don't. Snoop Dogg replied with OK and the conversation was over. On that day, Tupac was apparently really on fire. Apparently, he was supposed to have gone to a club and snatched the turntable record. He did this because a Biggie song was playing. Snoop Dogg felt that the aggression was directed at him. He also said that Pac recorded the radio interview completely wrong. From Snoop Dogg's point of view, Pac admitted that Snoop Dogg was no longer on his side. Then came the next day. The day of departure, Death Row Records didn't fly with a normal plane. It had a private plane. It was there for all the rappers and all the security. And so Snoop Dogg came to the New York airport with his security. 
but before everyone could get on the private jet, they were stopped. And that by Shook Knight. Shook Knight said, wait a minute, they can't come with us. They take the normal flight. Of course, he meant Snoop's security. Snoop knew that everyone else had their security on board. Tupac had his boys there and so did Shook Knight. Nevertheless, Snoop Dogg was not impressed. And this even though he knew that he had to get on the private jet all by himself. And then he did. He got in and greeted the people normally. He wanted to talk to the people normally. But he was only shown the cold shoulder and he was ignored. Then Snoop went to the back of the plane, took a blanket, a knife, a fork and covered himself. Throughout the flight, he wore sunglasses and had this knife and the fork ready under the blanket. He was ready to stab when it got serious because he felt that something was in the air. The whole five and a half hour flight, no one spoke a word to him. Fortunately, nothing else happened during the flight and they landed. Outside, the Rolls Royce of Snoop Dogg and the Rolls Royce of Tupac were waiting. Snoop Dogg asked Pac when getting on the way, Hey Pac, are you actually going to Vegas for the fight? Tupac actually ignored him and gave him no real answer. And that was the last time Snoop Dogg saw Tupac alive. And so the two unfortunately broke up in a fight. Which I find incredibly sad. Because according to the stories of many people who spent time with the two, they were really tight. They were really good friends. Snoop Dogg was already half a foot out of death row records at this point. He didn't feel like doing all the shit anymore. He left death row only a short time later. Tupac also had plans for his own label. And I think the two would have made up at some point. They would have gotten back together. Personally, I would be really interested in how Tupac's view of this whole situation was. You only have stories about the outlaws and Snoop Dogg. But, well, unfortunately, we will never find out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would be really happy about a rating and a comment because you can support me incredibly with that. Check out the podcast. I'll say it again. The link is in the description. And yes, people, take care. See you next time. Ciao.